For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall see the wrath of God abiding upon Him. For God so loved the world, the feet of a preacher that God loves, according to the Scriptures, is to bring to you the Gospel. The Gospel that Jesus Christ died according to the Scriptures. And He was buried. And He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now why is all that? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You are a sinner, and you will die. And if you die without Jesus Christ, God's Son, you will face the wrath of God in a place called hell. And yes, that loving God, the holy God, the God of all the earth, the judge of the righteous, will cast you into hell no matter what your preacher has brought. Because hell is real. And Jesus Christ spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. And the very reason why Jesus has come and Jesus is, why Calvary? Why the empty tomb? Why Christmas? Why Easter? It's because the fact is we are sinners and we cannot do anything to obtain the salvation that we need to get to God. You cannot come to God by being a good person, the Bible says. There is none good, no, not one. You can't come to God by your religion, for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't come to God on what you can do, because there's nothing you can do that can finish and match the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is sinless has always been sinless. Jesus Christ is God, and God is Jesus, and you are not. Now, every American thinks, oh, I'm the best, I'm the greatest, look at me, I... No. God looks at you as a sinner that you are. As a result of your sin, you will die. And unless you have the gift of God, the eternal life set by Jesus Christ, you will face the wrath of God. For sin, you need the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There is nothing else that can remove your sin. And all have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You've got a terminal condition, all of you. You've got the worst cancer of all cancers. You've got sin. Your priest, your pastor, your pharmacist, your doctor cannot relieve your sin. Only Jesus Christ can wash you of your sin. You need the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You need to put your faith and trust in the finished work of the gospel that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and died and buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the only way you're going to get to God when you die. Don't think that your religious organization will get you to heaven. Don't think because I don't believe in God that you're safe. You can believe whatever you want to believe in America, that's perfectly fine, but is it approved by God in the Scripture? The Bible says, Prepare to meet thy God. Prepare to meet thy God. I'm an atheist. Prepare to meet thy God. That's what the Bible says. The fool has said in his heart that there is no
know God. That's what the Bible says. Rest assured one day, whether you believe Christ or reject Christ, you will meet your God. You will meet your Maker. You will meet your Creator. You will meet the one that suffered and died upon that cross, whether you believe Him or not. I advise you to meet Him on the terms of God by faith and by belief. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will get to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will not go to hell. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's the love of God. The love of God is upon Calvary, where Jesus Christ died for your sins. Where Jesus Christ done for sins what you cannot do for sins. Jesus also records in the book of Matthew, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You'll say, but Lord, didn't I do this? But Lord, didn't I do that? Lord, am I? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Imagine God telling you to leave my presence. Most of you do not want to have God in your life. Most of you do not like this preaching. And you will get your wish one day. You will get the absence from God. You will not have God. You will not have the Bible. You will not have Jesus preach to you any longer. But that will cause the wrath of God upon you in the gates of hell, which will never come out. There's no Jesus in hell. There's no Bible in hell. There's no preaching in hell. But they... The Bible says that there is torment, there is pain, there is suffering. The absence of God is no peace. The absence of God is no mercy. Satan does not know what to be blessed, his people. Satan has no mercy and no grace. Those are attributes and gifts of God to people. If you want to live in peace and you want to have no more pain, no more sorrow, no more anything else, you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Because those who reject Jesus Christ will end up for all time, all eternity, burning in pain and sorrow and anger and darkness of wickedness your sins, paying for your sins for all eternity. And yet, if you are to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are to try your heart to finish work of God through Jesus Christ. If you are to put your faith and trust in the merit of Jesus Christ, the Bible proclaims that you will be a child of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I am one of God's sons by Jesus Christ to finish work. I have in me the Holy Spirit by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And you can too. You can be a child of God. You can have the Holy Spirit. You can have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Scriptures. By your faith and trust on the one who suffered and died and bled for you. You're not going to get that from religion. And you're not going to get that by, oh, there's just no God, the Bible is written by man and everything else. And then you're going to expect God to bless you. You expect God to give you good when you will not listen to what God has said. The Bible speaks about you will get a new body in glory upon your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You will get a body that will not suffer. You will get a body that will have no more pain. You will get a body that has no more acne. You will have a body that is new and sinless.
was. It will not break down. It will not sweat. But that is all by Jesus Christ. What's one very important thing you'll get by your faith and trust on Jesus Christ? You will not go to hell when you die. Now I know people say go to hell. But you do not fathom, you do not understand the penalty that hell is. It is the wrath of God. Because you will not believe on Him. The Bible records out of Jesus' own mouth a man that is in hell. And has been in hell. And is in hell today. And that man that's in hell, according to Jesus, wants us to preach to you about not going to hell. And you'll say, oh, my friends and I, we're going to party, we're going to drink hearty in hell. You think so, but that's the devil's lie. Because first of all, hell is pictured as fire, as flame. Your alcohol is going to evaporate. It's going to burn. And you're not going to want to party when you got 15 degree burns all over your body, inside and out. Records a man in hell says, Oh, just give me a little drip of water to cool my tongue. There's no bar in hell. There's no water in hell. You can't even sweat to take your sweat and dip your into the tongue. There's no bottle of water in hell. And yet, in heaven, there's the water of life. There's the crystal water coming out from the throne of God. There's no pain. There's no sorrow by Jesus Christ. If you don't want to march up and come up and say, I want that. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to suffer. I want to go to a place that's perfect peace and perfect love. Step up now. We'll show you the way to Jesus Christ. Will you shut up so I can sell my watermelons and I can sell these old strawberries that are going to rock tomorrow? You're a fool, the Bible says. Because in the moment of a twinkle in an eye, you know what? Your whole entire life may change. You realize if right now the Lord called His church home, the born-again Bible-believing Christians, you realize in what? tribulation you would be in? Do you realize even worse? What if God called you home right now, today? What if there is no afternoon for you? What if you do not place your eyes upon darkness of tonight? Oh, I can't wait to see the eclipse of the sun Monday. What if you don't survive? And you wake up in darkness and you'll never see the sun again. Never mind eclipse. There's no sun, there's no light in hell. Tragedy, torment, burning, suffering. That's what you get in hell. You will be cooked like that man's meat over there on that fire. And eventually that man's going to take that meat off that fire and he's going to serve it. But God will put you in that fire and he'll never take you out again. And you will not be consumed. You'll just burn. And burn, baby, burn for rejecting Jesus Christ. You know, there are people that have been here... We've been here for four years. I guarantee that somebody from this place has died and woke up in hell and said, Man, I wish I listened to that loud mouth idiot. I wish I had given heed to that man preaching the gospel every Saturday. And that person is saying today, Keep preaching to those people at that farmer's market. Tell them that Jesus saves, and only Jesus saves. This 
no other means of salvation outside of Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, Satan will give you anything and everything to be saved. Satan's salvation is dime a, dime a dozen plus shipping and handling. And it's like a credit card. You don't have to pay for it now. You just pay for it later. You know, people joke about selling your soul to Satan. And you do it every day. Satan, if I give you Mary, you give me a prosperous life, and then when I die, why am I in hell? Because he's a liar. Satan, if I go out and kill infidels, and cut off their heads, and I wake up and I find no virgins, but I find flames of fire burning for all eternity, because Satan's a liar. You know what's hell, you know, this figure, you know what's on the hell doors? You know what signs you find on the doors of hell? Baptist, Catholic, Islam, idiots, fools, atheists, PhDs, doctors, pharmacists, body pants, Americans, Polish. You find it all on the doors of hell, but you do not find Jesus Christ on the doors of hell. Jesus Christ is not found on the door because the Bible says He is the door. He is the only door to heaven. You don't go through Peter. That's a joke. That's a comic that Peter will check you into the pearly gates. My friend, if you read the Bible correctly, and I know most of you have not, you don't see the pearly gates until God casts every sinner who has not trusted Jesus Christ into hell, the lake of fire. You want to see pearly gates? Real pearly gates? Twelve of them. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today. You put your faith and trust with your heart upon Jesus Christ that saves, and you will see those pearly gates. I guarantee, Revelation 22. But if you reject Jesus Christ, you will not see Peter, and you'll see no pearly gates. You'll see darkness and flames and fire and hate and wickedness as you burn in the wrath of God, hell. Now, I, as a Bible-believing Christian by the shed blood and the finished work of the merit of Jesus Christ alone, I will see those holy gates. I will walk in and out of them. But that's only by the merit and finished work, the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the way you'll see God. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's not said by Mary. Though your preacher may quote that verse from John 14, 6, he cannot be the way, he cannot be the truth, and he cannot be the access to God, only Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, not water. Though he is the water of life. Jesus said, I am the truth, not your church. Jesus said, I am the life. Nothing else matches what Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is today at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty. Religion is not at God's Mary is in heaven, but she's not at God's throne. Allah and Muhammad, unless they believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are burning in hell. There are no Baptists in 
heaven. There are no Catholics in heaven. There is no Islam in heaven. There are only Christians in heaven. The only way you can be a Christian is by the finished work of your heart belief and your faith that Jesus Christ paid for your sins upon Calvary and finished it through the empty tomb. That's the only way. You can't give money to be saved. There is nothing you can do to get to God except your faith and trust on Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Nothing. Listen, I grew up my... Well, not half my life. I grew up some of my life, as I get older and older, I grew up as a Polish Roman Catholic. And there was no way to get to heaven as a Polish Roman Catholic. Going to the confessional, eating and drinking Jesus was not the way to heaven. And amazing, one day someone took an open Bible and showed me Jesus Christ. And when they showed me Jesus Christ, I realized the first time in my life, He is not nailed to that cross. He came down off that cross. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He cannot be the salvation between a woman's breast hanging from a chain. That Jesus has no power that's nailed to the cross today. The power of the biblical Jesus Christ is the one that died on that cross and was buried and arose again the third day. The angel said, He is not here. He is risen. That is the Jesus that was virgin born, who is God and is God. Jehovah Witness Jesus is not God's Jesus. Beware of the Jehovah Witnesses. Beware of the Catholics. Beware of the Baptists. God does not take Baptists. He takes ones that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You don't go up to God with your baptism certificate. You don't go to God with your church membership. You don't go to God with your money or your checks or your IRS. You go to God with the precious blood of the Lamb that took away my sin. And He can take away your sin. And life is not good if you ignore the message. Yes. yes. Did you know that he didn't do what you're doing? He did. Yes, he did. He, 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 he preached from a bow. He preached from a bow yes. and all the people heard him. Yes. He preached on the mountain. All the people of Israel heard him. He had to have a loud voice. John the Baptist preached from the rivers of Jordan. Everybody heard him. I have. You have not read your Bible. You read, Mount, Paul of Mars Hill preached to the people. Read about Paul. Uh, you did not finish. Excuse me. Show me where it says judge not in the Bible. If you read your Bible, show me where it says judge not. Show me. I read the Bible. I can open up to you right now. There's somebody who has not read the Bible. Because Jesus did use an amplified voice. Moses did preach to the crowd. You know how many people Moses preached to and heard? The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. This man's trying to raise his radio to out preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and no one is complaining to this man. Hey, your radio's too loud. He's too loud. The Bible's too loud. And the boy says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I will lift up my voice and proclaim that Jesus saves. The Bible says, lift up that voice like a trumpet and shout.
sought to find out how Jesus really is when you are standing before him. Some people think Jesus is a wimp. But if you studied your Bible, you realize that guy walked up and down mountains his entire life. That guy took the power of Satan and victory. That guy got the victory over the grave. You might be quite shocked to realize how Jesus' voice really is. Even I may be shocked. But to come up here and say, oh, Jesus wouldn't do that, Paul wouldn't do it, you're just expressing your ignorance of the Bible, because I have studied the Bible, I have read the Bible, I know what those men did. They preached to thousands and hundreds, if not millions of people, and they were heard. Now, yes, God, Jesus, Paul did not use an amplifier. I will give you that credit. You didn't have motor cars, but God, Jesus, and Paul did not have motorcycles. They did not have radios. They did not have automobiles. They did not have loud mufflers. They didn't have people talking. When Jesus spoke, they shut up, they stood, and they listened to what God had to say. Anything but America. And they amplified preaching that you are getting Saturday morning. I guarantee will stand at your own credit and you standing at God at the great great throne church and say, I never knew. And God says, well, you never knew? And what you hear somehow will be recorded back in your life. You will hear the amplification of a voice proclaiming not NASCAR, not proclaiming a baseball game, but proclaiming that Jesus saves. And at that point, it's too late for you. I mean, if I wanted to brag about Bible learning, and this is not the place, but if I wanted to brag about it, according to my studies, I'm a doctor, but who cares? The most important thing is, I am a Bible-believing Christian under the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I've got the Holy Spirit inside of me. You do not. And I know what the Bible says by the Holy Spirit. And I am doing what God has told me to do by the Scriptures. I think I know more Scriptures than you by God, the Holy Spirit. And you can have the same. You can have the same Holy Spirit. You can have the same Scriptures. And you can have the same salvation that I have today. By putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Quick question. Yes. Um, didn't Jesus preach non, um, let's see, nice and... non nice. And, really? And, yeah, you're being very rude, sir. No, I'm sorry. No, hold on. Didn't Jesus call them hypocrites, vipers? Yep. And... Have you read your Bible? Yes, I have. Oh, and wow, you... you went after the Pharisees. Let's see, wait a minute. Hard. Let's see if I can find that here for you. So I'll answer your question if I can... Yeah, but you're not going after Pharisees. Okay, well, where, okay, okay on that point, wait a minute, hold on. On that point, where have I done wrong against the people then? Where have, what, I, what have I said that has been wrong to the people You're then? You're taking people out. Taking people out? We haven't picked anybody what? out. Yeah, Who have I picked out? Because of my radio. Yeah? This is my one day off of work. I don't want a radio. And you come over here and repeat every 30 seconds. And I don't want to listen. Oh, it's for 45 I, minutes. We're here for 45 minutes. Because I know the Bible. You know what? Well, there's somebody here okay, who Okay, on that half right there, you know what? My preaching offends you, right? No. No? The way you do it, yes. Well, because because the Bible says get to preach the gospel. I know. Preach the gospel. I understand. I'm just... Yeah. I'm just, I understand. But listen, the only uh, way, the only you know, way they taking, can hear... I'm just know you're, let, you're coming off. Everybody comes by. They're saying you're rude. No. I'm just letting you know. The Bible says they were. Okay, you want to understand it. You know, we could. You no, know, hold on, sir. One more thing to you. Let me say one more thing. I got to do. I'm sorry. You know, we could go in there nice and peacefully and pass out gospel tracts, but your person said we couldn't do that. Where was I? Oh, yeah, Jesus saved. That's where I was. The same old message Jesus saved. This man said that people 
don't like what I'm doing. He didn't like what Jesus was doing either. Well, let me read to you from the Bible. Let me go to Romans chapter 10, if I may. Let's look at what the Bible says, shall we? Who cares what? Let men, let men be liars and God be true. I got that one mixed up. But let's go to Romans chapter 10. When the wind stops turning my pages, turn it again. Romans chapter 10. I'll start in verse 9, just a good starting place. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what we preach. For Scripture says, Whosoever believes on him should not be ashamed. I am not ashamed. I stand up here and proclaim the Scriptures. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. And there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. you got fighting going on in North Carolina today because of Southerners versus white people, white person versus black people, and black people against Jewish people because of a statue. And God says, I see no difference. You're all sinners. White, black, brown, yellow, green. You're all sinners. And statues are idols, and you're not supposed to worship them. Oh, where's the Baptist about saving the statues when they're idols? Well, let's get on with the Bible. For there's no difference between the two. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon God to be saved. All right. Mr. Radio Man. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it's written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not obeyed the gospel. Wow. For Elias said, Lord, who has believed our report, Isaiah 53. You see, God says, go all the world and preach the gospel that you may be heard. There are loud cars. There are loud motorcycles. He didn't mention cars and motorcycles. He just mentioned his radio. Last week we had the NASCARs that were being loud. Pretty soon we'll have the bikers come and they'll be loud. But the Bible says that God is pleased with the feet of them that bring the gospel of peace. And the gospel and the words also say you're not all going to believe. And yet we're still going to preach the gospel that Jesus saved. You don't like my tone, you don't like the volume of my voice, well, there's a lot of things you do as a world I don't like. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. When I got cars going down my road and they got the radios burning that I can't even hear myself think, well, I'm going to send you a loud mouth preacher that you may hear the gospel, that the loud tone of his voice will be for good and not bad. So... Until you shut every car off, every motorcycle off, and every radio off, then I won't need my implication. Or you can, if you don't want to hear me, you can tell the owner of the farmer's market, let us in and pass out our gospel track amongst the people and talk quietly amongst the people, and we will do that. But we are here four years later because they said don't give out that literature. So we stand here preaching loudness because the farmer's market said don't come in quietness. Don't bring Jesus in. So the farmer's market fault as my testimony I'm telling you today, and I'll get right back to Jesus saves. That's why we're here. Jesus saves. Why we're here? Because you won't let him in your boots. Let me buy a booth so I can have gospel tracks. And the same 
Bible story is that Jesus alone saves. You are going to face death one day. In the loveness of my heart, in the loveness of God, we are trying to tell you you're going to die. And before you die, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved from hell. You know there was a time in America when a preacher got up on the streets to preach the word. All respect was given to that guy. I believe it was George Whitfield. I could be wrong on that name. Who preached the gospel of Jesus Christ during the Great Awakening. And only preached Jesus Christ saved. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin said I could record his voice four blocks away. In order to be heard four blocks away that Jesus says, i got to use the amplification. But you're going to die one day, and you do not know when. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I don't care what you think of me. I absolutely do not care. I care what God thinks about me. And God says, I'm pleased. Those nine toes on that foot of that man, I am pleased because he's professing my son, Jesus Christ. I love he's preaching Jesus Christ. I love he's telling them to believe on Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to sell you alcohol and make you look like an idiot. I'm not trying to give you a prescription that will end up killing you or giving you cancer, worse things than what the prescription is supposed to help you with. I'm here giving you the eternal life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God said through studying the Bible, they're going to hate you. I read that last week, Proverbs 1. Did you forget the message already? That there are fools, Proverbs 1. There are simpletons, Proverbs 1. And boy, have we seen scorners. There I was, walking down the street, singing, Jesus saves! That better singing, dee dee da boo da what say, Jesus saves, going down the street. I go down the street, and my car proclaims, Jesus Christ saves. And only Jesus. We got some really good tomatoes. Oh, wow. I brought you a couple. Uh -huh. Make some tomato sandwiches. Thank uh, you. No, you went right to my heart. Baptist. <laughs> went right to my heart. That was the other tree in the garden. <laughs> hey, people like it. People like preaching. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I'm not ashamed. Step up here and say what your alcohol does for you. Come on. Step up with your alcohol. Come on, tell us how much of an idiot it makes you. I've been there. I was a drunkard. I was a man who grew up in my own Bacardi. Come on, I'll tell you about what alcohol makes you look like an idiot. The problem is, I don't even remember. What about your pills? The pills that you got to pay for. And what if Trump takes away your health care and you can't pay for those pills no more? Uh-oh. But see, my, my moans of salvation, Jesus Christ, is free. The government cannot regulate Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is able to save you. Jesus Christ is able. Nothing else can. Many of you are still in alcohol, drugs, and whatever to be. You're still unhappy. You're still miserable. Come to Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to tell you life is great, but you can get peace through your troubles. You can be loved through your problems. Now, being saved is not going to eliminate your troubles and trials and tribulations. It may give you more. Being a Christian may have non-Christians come up to your face and say, I don't like that. Jesus wouldn't do that. And yet the Bible says that. And the Bible says your conduct, what you will say. And yet the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 
The Bible told me what you would do and how you react. And the Bible tells you you need to be saved. And your conduct and your attitude to the preaching makes me more sure of the Word of God. Thank you. Did you know death is coming? Death is coming for you. And what you do or what you don't do before you die will have eternal consequences. If you believe on Jesus before you die, you're safe. If you die without Jesus Christ, you're damned, condemned. You know, God will judge you for the things that you do. The Bible says in Revelation 20, the books were open. God is recording the things that you do. He will record if you do believe on Jesus Christ. He will record if you do not believe on Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to do it by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. And it's great because this gentleman has testified that people hear us. And he has testified that every 15 seconds I say the same thing over and over. This radio station has to change its music every single time to get you to listen. What if they played that song, the same song, all day long? You change the radio station. And yet, but I had the salvation of God that's been the same since Peter, Paul, James, and Paul, uh, John. Has not changed. It's the same blood, the blood of God, Acts twenty twenty eight. Hey, did you know that that song is in the Bible? Song of no, not song of Tom. Ecclesiastes. Turn, turn, turn. It's in the Bible from the King James Bible. You are hearing a King James Bible song on the radio right now. Let me find it for you. A time to plan. Oh, let's find that in the Bible, please. All right, that song that's on the radio right now, the one stop turning my pages. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. That's that song that man just turned off. Have I studied my Bible? There's a time to be saved by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There's a time to die. The wages of sin is death. Take the time now to believe on Jesus Christ before that time of death shows up. Take time to bow your heart. You don't have to bow your knees. Bow your heart. If I got down on my knees right now, I wouldn't be able to get back up. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16. 31. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. 